Hey everyone, it's Cheetah here, and I'm going to be playing some Chan of the Mole. So, my first opponent is Softwares of Easy, I guess. And he is finally readied up. Okay. We're looking for a good hand here. That's not it. This is a nice hand, look at this. So we've got, we got Rampant Growth, we've got Farhaven, we've got Glade Heart. Many good things. So what I might do is play Rampant turn 2, then Bladeheart turn 3, and then Farhaven turn 4, and I should be able to gain 4 life that way. And hopefully we'll draw into something else. We do have this Eldrazi to work towards, and he is playing Moldea as well. So an Eldrazi would be amazing to get out, because even if an all this hits, then the Eldrazi doesn't die, so... It's basically the first person to bring out an Eldrazi will win. I may as well be gaining some life on the way with the Glade Heart. He does have a quest for the Gem Blades and Scoot Mob, so it could actually be Hunting Season rather than Moldea, actually, now that I think about it. But yeah, he's definitely Hunting Season because Moldea doesn't have this. So, that means I'll definitely get the Glade Heart. And I got another one as well, interesting. So, since they don't have removal, I can just bring out as many creatures as I want and they'll be safe. So if he taps out, he won't be able to attack him with the Scoot Mob, but if he leaves his land open, he could attack in, and I'd be scared to block, because he can have um, Earth Brawn or whatever it's called. Oh, I see what he's trying to do. So he's going to sacrifice this in order to get quest counters on Quest for the Gem Blades. This is be going to become 5-5, five, five, because it's going to get 4 counters on it. And then it's going to be unblockable, doing 5 damage every turn. So I think it's best for me to just keep the Glade Heart alive, even though he's offering up a really good creature. So I do have an Explore. But I'm going to bring out the Glade Heart first, because why not? And then I can play Forest and Explore, and gain a lot of life. So with this quest for the gem blades, uh, when it when creatures still damage to each other, then you can remove a quest counter from this. Put four one one counters on target creature. I never want this to be activated until I until I have an Eldrazi out, basically. So I'm never going to block. Unless maybe he offered both of his creatures at once, then I block. Yeah, I have more ramp now, so I can get another two lands with these three things: Rampant and Firehaven. But he has a Fangren first bomb there. So I'm going to be gaining a lot of life, but taking a lot of damage as well. He's trying to offer up this thing again, but I'm not going to let it happen. So yeah, we're going to get a lot of land here. And a lot of life. So we're going up to. Uh, let me work it out 29, 31, 35 life by the end of the turn, which is pretty decent. And how many lands do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if we draw a land, we get Artisan. If we draw something else, then that's good too. So it doesn't really. Anything that we draw is good. He's got the Primordial Hydra, that's going to be a problem. So it's going to have three counters on it. It's going to double every turn. This thing is going to be getting four counters every turn. If he plays doubling season, that'll be even worse. And I can no longer block anything. So this Artisan will be really nice, and all this stuff will be nicer. Okay, I've got the land and the Artisan. So 
So I may as well attack because I can return something from the graveyard. So whatever he blocks, I'm going to return it. With the artisan's ability. Although that is going to give him quest counters on gem blade, which I forgot about stupidly. But he thinks there's something up. So this might work out okay, even though it's a terrible, terrible blunder. He's still thinking though. Okay, we got away with it. Well, let's get Artisan out. But now the good thing is, um, I'll be able to block with this Artisan because Champions, Champion of Lamport's power is not greater than Artisan. He does have another Fangren Firstborn, so that's going to be a bit dangerous. But I still get to block at least one creature this turn. So probably, well, let's see. That's going to be a lot of damage. So this thing is going to have Trample at some point. It's between the Hydra and the Lamholt, the things I want to block. Probably going to be the Hydra. Although, then he'll get Quest for the Gem Blades, this will have 10, and then it'll be unblockable. So I think it's going to have to be this one. Ugh, so tough. Yeah, it's going to have to be this one, fortunately. I do not like this Hydra, though. So I think I'll die next turn, I think. Okay, this might save me. I can entwine it. So let me think. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is attack with everything. So he has to chump block with this. He's probably going to put... We might put some quest for the gem blades on it. In which case that would also be good for me, because... Um, then the counters wouldn't be going on the Primordial Hydra. So he's going to sack those two lands. That's the best choice for him. And then what's he going to block, if anything? He's actually going to block the Artisan to prevent the damage. So now with this Tooth and Nail, I can entwine it, and I can bring out... Luckily the two Glade Huts are still here. He's going to buff that up to 11-11, so next turn it'll be 22-22. But I can bring out Avenger and Primeval. So these will be plenty enough to defend with. And I'll gain 8 life as well from the Glade Arts. So I should be able to win next turn. As well as survive. In this one. This is a pretty nice game. I don't think he can win. Um, I think even if he has Earthbrawn to give a buff to one of his creatures, it's still not quite enough to win. So that was a really good draw, that Tooth and Nail. I have to say. It's really nice to get good draws as Moldea. So he's going to attack with everything, why not? So we've got to block... Um, something like that. 
you survive, right? Unless he's got Earthborn, let's do another one to be safe. And we have plenty of damage left over. So he does have a young wolf. Well, that's about it. That was a pretty nice game. So he's going again. Let's see what hand we get this time. Yeah, I don't like that. Something feels not right about this hand. I can get guaranteed four lands, but it's going to be so long before I can bring out these prime evils. Uh, but I'm t for some reason I'm tempted to keep it. I am playing first, so that. So let's go with it. Why not? It's gonna so it's slow, but it, if if I can get to Primeval Titan, it'll be fine. And I imagine I got plenty of lands and stuff to draw, plenty of um, oh nice, I've got the Elvish Piper. So if he's playing a mono green, he won't really have any removal, unless it's Hunter Strength. So I can bring out the Elvish, and then I can just oh he's playing the same one, so no removal. So this Elvish Piper will be amazing. It does have an early Vine Lasher. Yeah, this should go well. I'm going to get so many lands, it's going to be ridiculous. At least three prime evils. So, brings out this turn, I need to wait for the summoning sickness. Then next turn, well, every turn from now I can bring out a primeval turn. So if I draw a glade heart, that would be epic. I do want to draw a glade heart. I just gained so much life. I guess I can gain life from the Palaka as well, that's got 7 life. In combo with the Elvish Piper. He's got 2 Vine Lashes though, and he's got this Dredge Beetle. So he can get some damage in. I may as well wait until these are bigger before I chump block with this Firehaven Elf. <laughs> I did get a Glade Heart. <sighs> Good times. It is nice when things go right when you're playing Moldea. So I'm just going to wait for this ability because he's no idea if I can use it or not. I guess with four cards in hand, he will expect that something's going to happen. Got doubling season. That's no good to see. Yeah, he's going to skip attacking, so I may as well just start bringing them out. So I'm going to get a ton of life. So much life. Hang on a second. I don't want the Eye of Eugen just yet. I want a double forest, so that way I can actually manually play a Primeval Titan next turn. As well as use the Elvish ability. Whereas if I had Eye of Eugen, I wouldn't be able to do that. Oh, I would have, because I'd have drawn a forest anyway, perhaps, but... Best to be certain. So I may as well attack in with the Primeval Titan. Now I can get the Eye of Eugen. So back up to 21 life. 
And he is going to block. But only with one creature. That's kind of interesting. So here comes the other primeval titan. And there's going to be a third in a second. So I'm probably going to be able to get all the land out of my deck this game. Assuming he survives long enough. So these are getting pretty big now, but I can just chump block the 6-6 six, six one with the Firehaven Elf, and then the other one I can block with the Primeval Titan. Let's see what he does. He's got the Drudge Beetle from the graveyard to scavenge, and he gets double the counters with this thing. But he's got three cards in hand as well. Oh, he's got that one. That's a nice one. That's one of those cloning defenders. But he hasn't left enough mana for the, um, you know, Earthborn, if he has one. So I can safely block. Could bring out the Palaka Worm instead of the Primeval Titan. So I can block the other uh, Vine Lasher. So I'm going to do that. So it may as well kill there. Get a kill there. Don't even need to waste the Fire Haven just yet. Oh nice, we get to use Plow Under to get him to draw a bunch of lands. To put two lands on the top of their owner's library. We'll uh, bring out another Primeval Titan, because why not? And I think we win in a couple of times here, so I don't think there's much he can do. Even with this thing, the Duplicating Defender, my things have trample, and there's so much damage going to come through. I think I've, won I've got lethal anyway, haven't I? So I needn't be doing any of this. I think I actually have lethal, so I don't even need to get new lands. Assuming my, my maths is right. Seven, fifteen, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah, that's easily lethal. I just couldn't have bothered with that whole thing, but oh well. So, another good game. <laughs> that Glade Heart was just perfectly... perfectly drawn. Like, luckily drawn. But I didn't even need the life to win anyway. I would have won without that, just with the opening hand. Okay, another hand. Yeah, a bit slow again. I don't like these slow hands. But I am playing second, so I can always draw Rampants and Explores. Do have the Glade Heart, do have Oracle. So, you know, Oracle's always nice. He's playing a different deck, though. It's, ah. Fairy deck. So, I imagine all this stuff would be quite nice to draw. I do have a Rampant. That's pretty awesome. So I can get that on turn two. Then I can get Glade Heartland, or I could just go straight for the Moldea, the Oracle of Moldea. We'll see if he has a counter spell available, that's what we'll do. So two Zephyr Sprites to begin with. So I'm going to be taking two damage a turn from now, after this one. At least. We've got another Glade Heart. So I think against this flying deck, the Glade Heart should come out first, because we don't really have anything that great to work towards. We've got a Palaka Worm, but on his own I don't think I'll be able to win me the game, what with the unsummons and stuff like that that the Fairy deck has. Also has Switcheroos as well, so we don't really want to be giving away a Palaka Worm. So this rush is kind of painful. We've got Sprite Noble. So yeah, we're going to get out the Glade Hearts. Going to get the maximum use out of these, and then we're going to get out the Oracle, then we're going to get out... You know, we're going to slowly work up, gaining life on the way. We've got a Gaia's Revenge, so that can't be used with Switcheroo, because it can't be the target of non-green stuff. So that's good. I might be tempted to skip the second Glade Heart for a second, and then get out the Oracle. So I can start playing those lands off the top of the deck. Got Briarberry Curl, so he's got a lot of damage coming in, there's a lot of damage. 
That's six damage a turn that I can't block. So I need kind of tangles and I need all this dust. And while he doesn't have a counter, I think I actually will get out this Oracle. He could have um, an unsummon, but I can quickly snipe a land off the top if there is one. No, it's not there. So I'm getting an explore next. I may as well play that before I decide whether to put out the Glade Heart. He's on four, so he doesn't quite have enough for the switcheroo yet. But he's going to bring out the Glen Alandra Archmage. So this thing, when he has a mana, he can counter a non-creature spell. So if I'm going to if I'm going to use all this stuff, it needs to be when he has no mana, because this thing's going to be very annoying with it. So this could this game could be uh, could be a problem. There's eight damage down there as well. So let's hope we get something good. Five and elf. Well, let's draw first. Rampant. Do we want rampant next? We don't really want to draw rampant. But we could get four life next turn with Farhaven and Rampant if we then if we played the Glade Heart this turn. We would take four, six, eight damage. And if he happened to have Scion of Una, then we would lose next turn. But I think if he had that, he would have played it by now. So I don't think he has it in his hand. So it's unlikely he'll top deck it. So, I don't know. But if we play the Farhaven Elf now, we can definitely play Palaka Worm next turn. So yeah, we're going to do it this way. We're going to play the Firehaven Elf. We can't really draw Rampant Growth. We need to draw all this dust or something. Elvish Piper, not quite the same. So we're going to survive next turn by playing Palaka. He can't counter it with this thing. Because it's a creature spell. So another Briarberry. It's kind of annoying that he can see the top card of my library, though. Because he can plan, if he sees all the stuff there, which is the only thing that will save me, then he can just save a mana open for the this thing to counter a non-creature spell. So I'm down to five. I do have some lands on top. Got another land there, which is nice. So I've got 9 life, I can't survive next turn against all that. So I'm going to have to just play the Palaka Worm, I think. I think I'm going to have to attack him with everything as well, he's going to block the Glade Heart. I don't know, it's not looking good. If he doesn't have any defenders, I can actually win in two turns with too much of attacks, but next turn I don't really have many ways to gain the life back from this attack. Well, I've got 7, 8, 10, 12. I actually have 20 with this guy's revenge, funnily enough. So if he doesn't play anything, I could actually have a sneaky win. Which would be quite funny. But I imagine he's got something like Flash or Counterspell or something in his hand. I can actually play the Glade Heart for three, and then play two lands and get enough for the guy's revenge as well. So just in case this plan doesn't work. That was a test for counter spells as well. It didn't seem to really have many of them. This could actually be a win this turn. It would be kind of funny. And this can't be counted anyway. So, I 
This is 20 damage coming up. I'll be surprised if I win, but I'll like it. Oh, really? He doesn't have anything? That That is kind of funny. <laughs> that is kind of funny. Okay, so there's another win. A surprising win. I had a tangle coming up, but he could have just countered that. Um, right, this hand... Yeah. He's got a tangle. This, if he's playing fairies again, it's not going to work. Okay, this is better. Yeah, he is playing fairies again. That hand would have been awful against fairies. Against other decks it might have worked, but... Yeah, this is a much better hand. Because we've got the, the Explore for turn two. We just drawn a green sense, which is nice, but we also have the Glade Art and then the Prime Evils to work towards. So I can get up to four land, I can actually play this for a Fire Haven Elf and then get another. So he's going to play the Fairy Imposter, return his Zephyr Sprite, and then play it again, presumably. Yeah, he could have actually attacked for one before he did that. I've got a Rampant, should I use Rampant or the Explore? I guess Rampant, because then i got a guaranteed land to play with the, uh, the Glade Heart next time. Whereas Explore, I may not get a land. I'm going to take 3 damage a turn from these. I'm worried about counter spells. Yeah, he's sort of... Now if he's playing the Fairy Imposter and returning something, he might play this Zephyr Sprite again. Okay, there we go. He doesn't have enough for counter spell anymore. So we can safely bring out this one. So we're going to gain some life now, every turn for the foreseeable future. We'll be guaranteed to get to six lands unless he counters the Green Sun Zenith. Let's see what he does. So he's probably going to attack with everything, I assume. But I guess maybe he's deciding whether to bring out a Scion of Una or something like that. Oh, he's got the Sower of Temptation. That is not nice. He's going to steal the Glade Hut. That is not nice. Alright. So I'm taking 9 damage a turn. At the very least. I kind of need an all this dust. So I'd make it most likely for me to draw it. Or could I survive two turns if I play the Glade out this turn instead of playing Green Suns? I need to have a think here. So I play this. I play land. I play explore. Possibly another land. That gives me a possible 4 life. And then if I can play the Prime Evil Titan next turn, that's another 4 life. Which will get me on 22, which means I could survive 2 lots of 9, but if he plays other creatures, that won't be so good. But, there's a better chance than risking Green Suns this turn, getting a Farhaven, take out an Elf from the deck, take out a land from the deck. And then I have to draw all this stuff in one turn. So that to me is more risky. So I'm going to play this, land, and explore, and hope to get another land. Ah, sweet. So this worked out well. Hopefully he doesn't have a counter for the Prime Evil coming up next.
So if he does attack, I'm, I'm not sure whether to block the, the Glade Heart here. Because if he has a counter spell, I'll gain. It'd be better to block. If he doesn't have a counter spell, it'd be better to sit back. But I guess we always have a chance of blocking next turn. So. If he counter spells, he's not playing another fairy unless it's the spell stutter. But I'm hoping he just plays something. We haven't seen a counter spell from him yet in two of the games, this one included. So maybe he doesn't run them, but he's just sitting on the four mana and I don't like it. I don't like this one bit. I'm just convinced he has a counter spell. But he only has, if he has the spell status sprite, he only has four fairies on the board. So he'd only be able to counter a spell with five or less. So I'm going to risk it. Ah, there we go. Okay, we're safe. Do I want the, I don't really want the Eye of Eugen. I don't even want it. There's no reason to bring it out at the moment. So I'm just going to bring out two forests. I'm never going to be tapping my Eye of Eugen to get the Eldrazi out. I suppose I can attack like this. Is there much point? Mm. No, probably not. In case he has an unsummon, I want something to block with. He's got the Sign of Una. Wow, this is going to be painful. I think I just... Do I die then? Was that 3, 6, 8, 11, 14? 14. No, 12, sorry. Yeah, that's okay, then I can survive on one, assuming he doesn't have another sign of Una. Yep, there we go, sign of Una. Well, isn't that nice for him? <laughs> so this is going to be a loss. I'm I'm curious now to whether I would have drawn the, the all this dust that I needed. Probably not though, because I think I have three all this dust, so you know it would have been a reasonable. I mean, it wouldn't have been too crazy to see one. But it was less likely. Oh, it's, here's an all this dust in the starting hand, but not very much ramping. Got a nice Glade Heart, which has been saving our lives for many games in a row. Something about the hand is not nice, though. Let's risk to draw again. Uh, yeah, this. Oh, there, here we go. It was worth it. I have to cringe when I do these things as Moldea. Like when I played that Primeval Titan, expecting a counter spell. Makes me cringe when I mulligan just said. Makes me cringe. But this is nice. I'm good. I'm happy with this. And we even have an oracle. This is doubly nice. We even have the Eye of Eugen to make all this us cheaper to cast. We even have Avenger, which is like the best creature in the deck. So let's bring out the Oracle. So we've got Green Sun coming up. So he's brought out the Sprite Noble, so we get a guaranteed 5 forest because I can get Firehaven with Green Sun. But let's see if we've got any lands on top of the deck. We've got Tooth and Nail. I don't really want to be drawing that, I've got plenty of late game. Not really enough lands. So I think to shuffle the library, I could play Green Sun. And I think a Firehaven Elf would be a better choice than a Primeval Titan, because at least with a Firehaven I'm guaranteed a land.
Hmm. Yeah, I'll go with the, the Farhaven. Let's do that. By the way, I can only cast this for three, but I could bring out a Fierce Empath, you see, and then get a Prime Evil out of it. But it would, it would actually thin out the deck so much it would be likely that I would draw lands. And seeing as I've got all this dust in reserve if things get out of hand, I think I actually might risk this. So I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go to the Fierce Empath. Then I'm going to search out... Well, I've got Glade Heart, so I don't really want to draw that. So I'm going to shuffle again. I do get two shuffles this way. Yeah, but still no land on top. It was likely to see a land somewhere along the line with two shuffles. But that's two cards out of the deck anyway. Fierce Empath is out. Primeval is out. So he's going to use Hands of Binding there, attach it to his um, Sprite Noble. He's got another, he doesn't need two. Does he get a double cipher? Yeah, so every turn when this deals damage, he gets to tap two of my creatures. They don't untap during the next untap step. That's going to lock me down a little bit. So I'm never going to be able to attack with these things, but luckily the Oracle can use its ability without having to, you know, be untapped. So I'm going to draw another all stuff, so even if he has a counter spell, which we haven't seen any yet, um, if he counters one of them, i got another in my hand, which he doesn't know about. So that's good. And I'm going to draw another green sun, so that's been shuffled back in my library. And I'm going to redraw it. So I'll be able to get out that Far Haven Elf for sure now. And I get to shuffle the library again, assuming there's not a land right there. So I'm predicting six lands soon enough. So the Primeval Titan will be very useful in a couple of turns. So we'll wait for him to cast his Hands of Binding again. The good thing is it's quite a slow rush, so even though I don't have a Glade Titan, it's okay, because he's got a slower kind of hand, a more control hand rather than a rush hand. Which I'm fine with, he can lock down my little 1-1 one -one thingy. And he's not even going to play anything, he's just going to sit on the five lands. And I have Harmonize coming up. Uh, that makes me not want to play Green Sun. But at the same time, next turn I play Harmonize, I get a, card, a handful of ten cards. So I'm going to have to discard three, that'll seem a bit wasteful. And we play Green Sun, maybe he counterspells it anyway, in which case we draw Harmonize. So either this gets countered and we get Harmonize, or we get Farhaven Elf and a guaranteed land, possibly two lands, so let's do this. Sign of Una, that's not a counterspell. Spell to set us right, that is a counterspell. But this is a four mana cost, is it not? Hmm, apparently not. Well, let's read this. So, when spell status bright enters the battlefield, count the target spell with converted mana cost X or less, where X is number of fairies you control. That's three fairies. This had converted mana cost of four. So, that I don't really get. It should be four, you can only count something with three or less. But whatever. Um, maybe X spells do not count. Maybe the X value doesn't count towards the converted mana cost of a spell. But I'm pretty sure that it does. I know, I could be wrong. I'll have to check that. I'll have to check that at some point. I'll have to check the chat in a minute as well. I can't see the chat in game at the moment on Twitch. And it's not right there when I minimize, so... I'll have to check that after I finish playing, unfortunately. But yeah, so he's going to swing in for... 7? No, 6 damage. So I'm on 10. Not looking too good. Hopefully I'll survive one more turn, I do get Harmonize. If he doesn't play a fairy, 
then I should be okay. For another... Oh. Oh, this is okay. Dissipation field. Yeah, that's fine to see that. So whenever a permanent deals damage, return it to its owner's hand. That's, I don't care about that one. So I've got a land on top of the deck. May as well play this next one. And it's all this last time, I think. There we go. Everything's nice. He's only got one card in hand. Even if he had a counter spell, I would have survived another turn. Unless he drew another Scion. But yes, things are looking good. So we don't even need to play Harmonize at the moment. Just bring out the Primeval Titan. Guess we could have done Explore Harmonize, but I'd rather get a Creature on the board to do some damage to him. And I get a double land guaranteed anyway with Primeval, so... I get to cast more things next turn, including Palaka Worm, so I get some life as well. So I think we have a win here. And I've got a Tangle as well, I don't see this going well for him. I could have actually played the uh, Avenger and I probably won next turn. With the lands, you know, the lands would buff the plants. Yeah, I'll just play Palaka. Melbourne next turn, anyway. I don't imagine, even if he draws something to block and he can survive an extra turn, I don't think he'll bother with it. No, oh, he is actually going to bother with it. So the game's going to go on a bit longer, but... Yeah, I... I literally can't see out any way that I'm going to lose this. So he is going to block. Right, so that, you know, he's not going to stop that. That was an interesting game. Alright, so, next game. Oh, this is a nice hand. Look at this hand. We're getting some good hands here. I like the changes I made to the Moldea build as well. It's down to 60, it was on 61. There's the little differences, or the little changes that can make a big difference sometimes. But yeah, this hand, we've got so many lands. Two Explorers. Green Sun Zenith. What could go wrong? And we've even drawn a Glade Heart as well, so... So he's playing uh, Lords of Darkness, it looks like. So we've got the Soot Imp, so I'm going to lose a life every time I cast a non-black spell. But I'm going to gain two life every time I play a land when Glade Heart comes in. So it's worth it to bring out the Glade Heart, I think. But what I could do is... 
Because you know that would be less good. What would it? I don't know. I'm just going to bring out the blade out. Because why not? So I think next turn I can get a guaranteed 6 land, so I got this thing to search out a Firehaven Elf. That will bring me out a land, then I got a land to play from the hand. Then I got Primeval. But I'm going to have to sacrifice this Glade Heart for now. She was short lived. He's only got 4 cards left in the hand. He's going to have some meaner things to deal with than the Glade Heart in a second. Yeah, another land draw, so. We don't need to play the Green Sun to get out of the Fire Haven Elf, so what we can do is just play land, explore, and then another land. And we've got a second Primeval, which is nice. So what we could do before we go to the next turn is we could use Green Sun to bring out a Glade Heart, another Glade Heart, seeing as we've got two Primevals, and if he wants to use removal on it, that's fine. He'll have less to deal with the Primevals when they come out. So let's get a Glade Heart. So I imagine when he sees the primeval boom into the field, he's going to kill the Glade Heart as quickly as possible. We will find out. I may, may as well play this land first, actually, saying that. Just to guarantee the gain of two life, and then I can play this one and watch the Glade Heart die. Nope, no death, okay. So another four life from these two lands. So the good thing is now, even if he kills my Primeval Titan, I can next turn either play the other one, or I can tap this out for 7 and bring out an Artisan of Kozlak. So let's see what he decides to do. Probably a Damnation, but no, he's got Corrupt, so that's 6 damage. Goes to the Primeval Titan. So I'm just going to bring out the next Primeval Titan, I think. Just get all those lands out of my library. So I gain another 4 life from the Primeval Lands. And then another two from the forest I'm going to play from the hand. So there's more things for him to deal with. And he, he, I think he would have used a Damnation last turn if he had one. So I think he's only got a single target removal, at least for now. So that's kind of nice. Or maybe he just wanted his Soot Imp to survive more than he wanted to kill my Glade Heart. I don't know. But before anything happens next turn, I'm just going to swing him with the Primeval Titan and the Glade Heart. Just to test if he's got removal. Because he's going to want to use it before I get to the combat phase. I do have this sneaky guy's revenge. So I'm going to play this. It's a guaranteed 8 damage. It's going to be pretty cool. So a guaranteed 8. I probably should have played the land before going into combat. But there's a Doomblade. So the Primeval is going. There's a Tendrils. So the Glade Heart is going because he can't target the guy's revenge because it can't be the target of non-green things. So he's going to need to use a board wipe solely to kill the guy's revenge. Personally, I'd have left the Glade Heart on the board and not used removal on it, if I was him. So 
So yeah, I'm just going to wait here and do this 8 damage a turn, I think. In the meantime, I can just cycle through the deck with Eye of Eugen and bring out the Eldrazis, because why not? I don't think he has any way to make me discard from hand, so... And there is damnation to get rid of the guy's revenge. But I can just bring out Artisan. Oh, it's Avenger. I want to keep Avenger back. Let's just bring out an Artisan. So next time I play this, I can cast Guy's Revenge back from the graveyard. And seeing as it's haste, I'll get another 8 damage in. It does have a Soul Cage Fiend to block with, so when that dies, we both lose 3 life, but that's okay. So come back, guys, revenge. And once again, he needs another damnation or a mutilate. But with a mutilate, he wouldn't have enough to kill the artisan. So he needs this other damnation, really, if he has one. If he hasn't, if he didn't draw removal, he's actually dead next turn. It's 18 lethal. Oh, there's a doomblade. So I'll use this time to bring out another artisan, just in case he does find a way to kill the guy's revenge. So I don't think there's much he can do to win this. He's got um, Reaper from the Abyss, what does this do? So that will be able to block and kill my guy's revenge. So let's get those out of the way. And then I'll bring out a Black Worm for now, gain 7 life. And then again, he needs to draw removal. Otherwise he's going to lose, because I've got another artisan to bring back the haste to Guy's Revenge next turn. But he's going to take 8 damage guaranteed next turn. Hellcarver Demon. I guess he can block the 8, but then he'll take 7 from Palaka, so... Either way, he won't have enough life to play any spell that can draw him cards. So once again, he needs a damnation or a mutilate. Actually, no, mutilate wouldn't even be good enough, so he needs a damnation. Or the Reaver Demon, a nice draw. So he destroys all non artifact, non black creatures. I draw a card from Palaka Worm. But the next trick I have is Avenger. So I'm going to bring it out. So again, this time Mutilate will do, so Mutilate or Damnation. Or another Reaver Demon, I suppose.
No, I guess not. So, that's a win. He held on for surprisingly long. So that'll probably be it for today. I hope you enjoyed these Moldea games. And I'll probably be hosting up again in a second. And I'll be enabling Twitch chat and game, which will be good. So I'll see you in a minute.